da, da, da. Hello, everyone, <laughs> for another installment of The Incredible Hoax. Yes, The Incredible Hoax. We're here. We've we've crawled through the mire and mucus to get here. I'm Mark Hoke, a movie enthusiast and a writer, composer, and playing with pain today. That's right. He's playing with pain. You had the flu? The bronchial flu, yeah. Yeah, so... Yeah, I'm not going to kiss him today. No. <laughs> no. I'm not going to drink after him. Yeah. But next week, you know, all bets are off. No. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking uh, of which, I am Chris Hoke. Right now, editing, what you see behind us is editing of the uh, series Cowboy and Lucky for Red Sea. And this is our world. <laughs> this is my <laughs> world, at least. Uh, here of late. Editing, 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 editing. Yes. I've officially dubbed it the Bat Cave, but you yeah, know, Bat Cave, but Fortress of Solitude, right? <laughs> so, all right, we're coming today from the Red Sea Studios again because uh, that's just the way it is, and uh, <laughs> right, yeah, that's the way it worked out, which and is fine. What is on the agenda for today? Well, today I want to start off with, so I can at least say that you know the week that I spent in bed, uh, I did something productive. I did a I. Worked up a top ten. It's a, there was a joke in there, and I just I oh go mind. go ahead go. <laughs> no, I just <laughs> uh, but yes, I was stuck in bed for a week with a hundred and three degree temperature for <laughs> most of that time. Being productive in bed. And uh, oh my goodness. Yeah, that's anyway, where the joke was going. Uh, yeah. yeah, just just throw us a curveball <laughs> right off right off the bat. That's fine. Uh, well, anyway, so what did we learn in our week of yes, being flu like? The official title is my top ten musings while stuck in bed watching TV for a week. Here All we right. go. Go for it. So my options are watch TV or cough up another lung. Where do we stand on comas? Number nine. Where's the stop coughing, coughing button on my universal remote? Number eight. Is it me or did the Geico Gecko just hit on that progressive insurance chick? I would have. All right. Number seven. Apparently, music videos only play between last call at bars and wake-up calls at hotels. Hmm. Observation. Musings. <laughs> musings while stuck in bed while watching TV for a week. Number six. Those gals on that Trojan back massage commercial know they can get off with that contraption, right? Right? I don't want to know what that is. <laughs> Number five. I lost interest. If anyone's seen the commercial I'm talking about, it's freaking hysterical. Like They're laughing on their backs on the floor. Ah. Is it like Trojan, like the condom Trojan? Yeah, like the oh. Trojan. They have they have like this vibrator uh, back massage. I just call it a spade a spade. It's a back massage commercial. Uh huh. Yeah, and they're talking. Oh, it's so relaxing, and all these girls are like at a uh, what you call it a um, bachelorette party. And they're all excited that, you know, the, the, the bride-to-be has gotten her back massager. And you're like, and they're all like, oh, how great and comforting it is. Like, so I'm like, well, I just want to be the guy that throws cold water in the whole thing. Guys, like, well, you know you can get off on that, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that'd be cold water. But go ahead. Yes. <laughs> Either way. Uh, number five, I lost interest in my narcissism when everyone started talking about it. Number four, iron, that's irony. Number four, until I tasted mucus, I thought salt made everything taste better. Uh. Number three, if I was a Muppet, Muppet, what kind of Muppet would I be? Number two, does Jennifer Aniston have plans for New Year's Eve? We can only hope. Okay. Number one, did the grill marks on my back look like bed sores to you? Okay. Does the grill marks... On your back. Yeah, well. do, do the griddle marks on my back look like dead <laughs> sores to you. Wow. And then he throws the card at the... <laughs> All right. I forgot to say it was from the home office in Asa, Texas. <laughs> Sorry about that. Well, you see what happens there, folks, is you're flu-like and you have fever and the mind runs places it shouldn't run. and yeah. Usually that doesn't get captured. We've captured that moment. <laughs> <laughs> well, I thought there was a few funny things in there. There were. Um, the Trojan thing was, you know. Here. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, you know, it, it's being that it's, you know, the holiday season is, right. is here. 
Um, <coughs> we've had Black Friday. Me. We've had Cyber Monday. Yes. Uh, we've got a bunch of people who uh, may be looking to start up uh, their HD libraries for the first time. Yeah, they went and bought a Blu-ray player or whatever. Yeah, they went and got the TV they want. They exactly. got the player that they want. And they're like, well, where to, where to start? So I thought, well, why don't we start kind of today with a little informally, just with, with some uh, helpful suggestions of what uh, to, to grab at their library to start out, and we'll go from there. All right. Um, may I start with what I think is the best overall uh, Blu-ray, not because it's like the best movie ever, but it's the best overall Blu-ray. Uh -huh. You're going to get a t ton of stuff that's in HD. Usually when you have special features, you know, a lot of that stuff, is it's it's a mixed bag. You're not going to see even the, you'll see like the movie in HD, but not the special features. Okay. This wall-to-wall -wall has everything in uh -huh. HD, uh, including screen tests. Uh, the movie I'm talking about is uh, 2008's Iron Man. Uh, it has a great, vi uh, sharp picture, and, and it happens to be a, a, a solid uh, a action blockbuster movie mm -hmm. and uh, has a nice subtle kind of uh, romance in there too but uh, uh, just overall the visual quality audio quality it's the best overall blu-ray I would recommend starting with okay I'm a cheapskate okay <laughs> <laughs> and I always like I'm the one searching for all the bargain DVDs they're like or blu-rays they're like five bucks yeah which actually finds them now for hot Christmas for uh, five bucks, and uh, and I've actually snatched them up. So uh, <clears throat> to me, what I'm looking for in terms of uh, home video is what can I get the most for my money? And I don't know if they still have it, but at Walmart, they had a combo pack of, I think it was French Connection and Patton for 15 bucks on Blu-ray. So right there, <laughs> Yeah. that, that would be if you can find that combo pack for fifteen bucks, just buy that for the connection and patent. Yeah. But anyway, in terms of your question is more about uh, performance of uh, HD quality and whatnot, and mm -hmm. uh, um, you know I'm not the big home video um, connoisseur that you are, mm. but uh, uh, I would have to say my favorite um, uh, uh, Blu-ray so far has been The Dark Knight. I thought that it had a uh, has a tremendous uh, audio, tremendous video, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, we, yeah, we agree. I, so my my favorite overall thus far for Blu-ray has been The Dark Knight. Whenever I want to, in fact, we just bought a new Blu-ray player. <coughs> Excuse me, we bought a new Blu-ray player um, on Black Friday or that weekend, mm -hmm. and uh, the one we popped in to test that was The Dark Knight. So that's my favorite Blu-ray thus far is The Dark Knight. That's a good one. It's a good yeah. one to have. Um, but look for that $15 combo pack of French Connection patent. <laughs> that also is a great deal. And uh, I know some people might, as they, as they watch this, and they may have read some reviews on, on Blu-rays and whatnot. Uh, Patton has, is one of those. It's, it's, uh, it's almost legendary now. Some of the reviews it's gotten for its, uh, its Blu-ray release. Mm -hmm. uh, ignore the, the, all those... Uh, Reviews on the patent. Ignore the critics. Ignore the critics on this one because what they're talking about is something that is so minute, and I won't even get into it. But it's mm -hmm. it's 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 this digital scrubbing issue. I won't bore you with it. Let's just say that the the average person, it's 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 really, uh, it's a kind of a mountain out of a mohill. Okay, so uh, I rest assured you're going to get a sharp nice picture on patent it's the best it's mm -hmm. ever looked and that's the, that's the bottom line that's all, all right. you care about so yeah you should be able to make that purchase with confidence is yeah. what i'm trying to say and i'm not one who even when do with dvds when dvds first came <clears> out <throat> i was like wow all these extra features mm -hmm. but as time goes going on i don't care about them i just want the movie with the best video and audio that i can get and right. I, now i don't even look at special features anymore i don't want the making ofs I don't listen to the commentaries because, frankly, I like forming my own opinions mm. <laughs> and just have my own interpretations and then just leave it at that. I don't really, I'm not big into what was in the filmmaker's mind. And mm -hmm. I would hope I could be able to digest what they're trying to tell me just through the movie. Right. And if I have, they have to explain it any further, it kind of, well, then why did I watch the movie? So, 
uh, ha having said that, I'm looking for top quality video and audio, and uh, uh, some of my favorites have been so far on Blu-ray was The Dark Knight and uh, uh, Saving Private Ryan. I recently got loved it. Um, Kill Bill One was tremendous on Blu-ray. So anyway, yeah, yeah, you're not going to go wrong for the most part. Uh, yeah, I, I, I would say the most disappointing. Blu-ray, which is on my list, uh, is uh, Tim Burton's Batman from 1989. Uh, it is so clear that that movie has been just like, tr just moved from VHS transfer to Laserdisc to DVD. It's it's the same old, uh, very dirty copy uh, that that's been going around for over mm -hmm. 20 years. So it's really a shame a movie that is that popular and and that good hasn't gotten a. Uh, a restoration or a cleanup, just a good old fashioned cleaning. Mm -hmm. uh, of all the Blu-rays that I've seen, it is the one that most noticeably looks dirty. And uh, so I would hold out on that one. Mm -hmm. uh, but for the most part, 98% uh, of the time, if you buy a Blu-ray, you're gonna be happy with it and it's gonna be better than your DVD copy. Right, that's right. And, um, well, with that, I think we kind of exhausted that segment. <laughs> I wanted to... You love how we we are probably the worst show in the invention of shows and segue from one topic to the other. Because you and you both, when we get bored with something, we don't hide it. <laughs> and we're both kind of like, yeah, well, that's all that subject. Let's just find the next one. Yeah, exactly. So I don't know if it shows or not, but that's kind of... Me and you both are terrible segwayers. I, I mean, well, just... sometimes we're better than other days. Today, we're not very good. <laughs> uh, like I said, we're playing with pain. Uh, well, here's the thing. You had the flu, and my mind is still over here editing. Yeah, you're still thinking of, like, I'm, scene 46, I'm, and uh, take three. And it's going to be pretty much that way for a while. Mm -hmm. So, anyway, but, but, but I, I do think that, in general, you and I both don't hide when we're kind of tired of something. Yeah. Of the subject in general. Because <laughs> even, that we, even when we go to a movie, me and you, if we're going to see the same movie and we're bored with it, me and you will look at each other about the same time. Yeah. Well, Avatar, and me and you looked at one another. Started laughing. Yeah, we were kind of like, this thing's still going. <laughs> and like, the funniest thing is when we go to see movies Jeez. together, when we see movies together and like the trailers, and then I'll be thinking it, and as soon as I think it, he'll start laughing. Cause I'll try and like not laugh because I'm trying to like, you know, I'm trying to be. I'm one of those people that tries not to like. I'm real big on like not stepping on other people's space in a theater. Uh, yeah. So I don't like being overly loud or anything else because it's just it, it drives. It's annoying to me when other people do it. Sure. You on the other hand, ah, oh, that's stupid. <laughs> oh God, that's stuck. Are you kidding me? Did y'all see that? Did y'all see that? I mean, you have like no qualms, but what's funny is in real in everyday life, you're the quieter one, and I'm the one who's more boisterous. But get them in the theater, <laughs> holy jeez! Remember in Scream, they made fun of that the uh, the, the black girl that kept like uh, <laughs> kept talking during the movie. Yeah, <laughs> that's you. <laughs> oh no! Look how shakes this beer. Oh, are you gonna get you? <laughs> Playing with pain, folks. Woo! All right, next subject, as we've unsegwayed, are all the hell. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> okay, yes, all right. Um, I thought I'd mention a few upcoming movies that we can, like, either poo-poo or... Ones we haven't seen? Yeah. We're already critiquing movies we haven't seen. Yeah, what, what the hell? Yeah, okay, I'm, I'm gay. Let's do it. Um... <laughs> like I'm pulling, kicking and screaming here. Um, well, some of these are like movies I, I think I'm looking forward to. So you can like tell me that I'm crazy or not. Right. Okay. Stuff like uh, like Thor is coming out, directed by Kenneth Branagh. That comes out next May. And of course, I'm a big Kenneth Branagh fan. He's not in it. He's just directing. He's just directing it though. Okay. Um, well, that's one of those ones where I, I hope for the, I pray for the best and hope and expect the worst. 
I mm. really don't see them pulling off. And that's not. I like Kenneth Branagh. He's a good director. Mm. And he's as good as anybody to take a stab at. It. Right. I just see translating to a movie. I don't know how that's going to work. Thor. I mean. I don't either. I mean, it could be terrible. Yeah. I mean, but I'm hoping it's not because yeah. I, I really like his. He has like a a flair to his, his directing. Mm -hmm. You know, with films like Dead Again and and even his Hamlet. He kind of brought this kind of flair and just uh -huh. kind of uh, where he just kind of ratchet up, ratchets up the uh, the yeah. action. And he tried it with Frankenstein. It didn't work as well, but no, he tried. But he did try. Yeah. <coughs> what I think is weird is the next Pirates movie, Pirates, Pirates of the Caribbean. Saw the first preview for that yesterday. I watched it. Yeah. Well, first of all, I'm hoping it's it's good. I hope it's like the one that kind of. Like gets the the franchise back on track. Yeah, you know, I mean, which is really all we can hope for. The at third this point. one sucked. I hated the third. The one. The third one was so bad, and uh, and apparently third movies in the two thousands just just once I got to the third, it was like everyone lost their mind. Yeah, Matrix three, Spider Man Horrible. three, Horrible. The Pirates three, Horrible. and you're like, what the hell? I didn't. Well, I thought uh, the Shrek three was so lacking in energy. That one I didn't care for either. So I was like, damn, what is going on? Well, here? I think that's the part of it is by the time you get to the third, well, Back to the Future three, which was not two thousands, but mm. Back to the Future three, me and you had this argument before. God, is that movie slow and stale to me? Mm. I think by the time you've made three of them, you're wore out. Yeah, you're bored with it. I mean, um, it's just hard to maintain that. I mean, that's the reason why these stars and whatnot will quit these TV shows or these film franchises. Uh, and the public will be like, oh, what are you doing? They're so good. But from the artistic point of view, yeah. you don't know what else to say with it anymore. Right. You've run out of things to say. You don't know how else to approach it. It's, you're done. You've, 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 you've bottomed, you hit the bottom of that well. And um, I think a lot of times with the third ones, that's what's happened. Pirates of the Caribbean, they were mm -hmm. they hit the bottom of the well for those guys, for that. Well, yeah. I think there's also that issue of how many of those that we mentioned were actually like filming back to back. That's you know, it's man. like one big script or two scripts, and they filmed them both back to back. There is something to be said for working a project, stepping back, yes. finding out what people are responding to, mm -hmm. hearing, getting the feedback from the audience because they'll tell you. Because had they had like pirates this is a classic example had they stepped back and had that chance to hear what people didn't like about dead man's chest yeah. they would have like oh crap they're gonna hate the third one then they would have been they're like okay well we better rewrite 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 yeah. and because uh, there was no sense in so much of what they did in that thing and two they forgot that 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 everyone expected a buddy movie uh they expected even though he's a pirate, they still expected uh, Johnny Depp, uh, his character, Jake Sp uh, Jack Sparrow, and uh, Orlando Bloom and Kira uh -huh. Knightley ought to be the three heroes uh -huh. together, working together for the same cause at some point. And that never really happened. Right. And, 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 and so the whole time you're just kind of like, well, the friends are like working apart and they're not really getting along yeah. it was odd it just it's not what fans wanted mm -hmm. no i mean it, it was totally when it was over it was like spider-man 3 was the same thing when it was all over I, that's not what i wanted pirates 3 was not what i wanted but anyway what else is coming out all right uh super 8 that's that uh sci-fi jj abrams movie uh, we don't know much too, about it. Too little info to comment. Yeah. I mean, they've kept But that, I'm intrigued. That, that's another one of those where I saw the preview they left out, they put out was good, but mm -hmm. that's not enough for me to base anything on. Of course, Hangover Part 2. I'll be there. Out. I want to see that. I'll be there. Talk about a movie. The first one was such a, you um, know, that was a surprise to everybody. Uh, Green Lantern, uh, I'm curious there. I saw a preview. It looked horrible. Well, to be I'm, honest, based on the preview I saw, it looks horrible. I'm curious... Uh, but I would have to say, though, because I'm more uh, a Hal Jordan, Green Lantern fan, so maybe I'm, I'm hoping they, they do it right. I don't know. Yeah. Um, we got sequels like Cars 2 coming out, but here's the weird one. Here's yeah. a weird... They're trying to reboot Planet of the Apes again. Rise of the Apes. Mm -hmm. 
It's like, why can't they leave that alone? Uh, yeah, I am. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> the Mark Wahlberg, Tim Burton one was okay. It was pretty lackluster. Yeah. I don't, I don't know what all... I, 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 it's one of those movies, I don't know the behind the scenes, but just from watching it and knowing Tim Burton's style... He had to have had his hands tied at some point because that, that was not your typical Tim Burton movie. If no. it had, had Tim Burton's flair, it probably would have been better, but something happened. I don't know what, but something happened. I, I, I don't either, but yeah, it was one of those things where Mark Wahlberg's character, he gets on this this planet. He seems not surprised by anything that's going on. <laughs> he, just, he basically does his... Uh, it's like, okay, apes, uh, excuse me, I get it back get on my plane. And they're <laughs> like, hey, get here's a broom, get to work, you... Human slave. And well, it's weird. It's like the, uh, the, the when they make fun of him on Saturday Night Live. Hey, what's up, ape? What's up, ape? Say hello to your mother for me, ape. <laughs> um, of course, the ne the final final Harry Potter comes out next summer, which you you'll be glad it's over. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, you know Conan. <coughs> Excuse me, Conan the. The Barbarian. Uh -huh. It's getting rebooted booted next August. Do you know that? Who's who's coming out in that one? Who's starring? Who's Conan? It's some unknown. Mm. Oh. But who's, I thought that who's, was who's directing? Marcus Nespel. He's done uh, those uh, those horror remakes, those reboots, uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Friday the Thirteenth. So I'm, right. I'm I'm, I'm kind of like. I'll reserve judgment. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> well, you know, Zack Snyder was able to do that, and then. Show that he, yeah. he was a good talent, so I'll I'll do like you. We'll, we'll, we'll see. We'll just have to wait and see. Um, I don't know what to make of this Adventures of Ten Ten. It's it's that motion capture animated epic that Steven Spielberg and Peter Jackson have been working on for years. Yeah. I don't it know. finally comes out a year from now. Yeah. I have no idea what to make of it, but yeah. all I know is if Spielberg and Peter Jackson think enough to work on it for this long. I well, it's based on a French, hope it's good. I, think, I believe it's based on a French comic. <clears throat> it's, and it's based yeah. on a French comic. I don't know anything about the comic. You know, that's not that's I'm not familiar with it. Um, well, let's wrap up with let's yeah, okay. wrap up with Cowboys and Aliens. Yes, Harrison yes. Ford coming back in a big sci-fi blockbuster type movie, and I have seen the previews for it, and with John Favreau. And Harrison Ford, and of course, Daniel Craig is, I think, the main lead in it. Uh, that's got potential to be pretty good. So I have high hopes for Cowboys and Aliens. Uh, me too. Yeah. Yeah. Because it, it would be nice to see Harrison Ford come back. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know he did Indiana Jones 4, but, you know, it was, it had its moments. Overall, you know, I don't know. It has moments of being really good. It has other moments that are really cheesy. Overall, I liked it, but it was not to me the comeback that I wanted for for me. Well, I, I, for me, I guess maybe I was a little, I was a little more. My expectations were, I guess, low. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, I, I love Harrison Ford is one of those guys. He you like to choke him one minute, mm -hmm. and then you want to pat him on the back the next. Yeah. Because one on one hand, he's he'll He'll be embracing parts of his his past, and then other times it seems like he kind of dupes on his past. So you're kind of like, well, it, it, it's a little frustrating. Mm -hmm. um, but that said, uh, I thought Indiana Jones Four was um, was was fun, and I mean, it, they hadn't. It's been what it had been almost twenty years since the last yeah. sequel, so I, I I didn't have a whole lot of. Uh, expectation on it and i thought it ended up being good and then after that long mm -hmm. of a of a break uh i think it's the best you could hope for uh but yeah cowboys and aliens directed by john favreau he's done iron man he's done uh uh, Zathura, uh, uh some film, elf he also did elf so he's, he's a he's a he's a solid director mm -hmm. and i'm hoping uh this will kind of continue his streak of good movies all right what's next and to wrap up today, it's time for movie rental suggestions and quote of the week time. All right. Um, I guess we, let's start with movie rental suggestions. Oh, I got one. Cool. I got one. 
Movie, you got one? Okay, movie. Yeah. I, I watched it. It's a it's it's a new movie. It's it, it's it's new to video, and it didn't it did okay in okay. theaters. But Tom Cruise, Night and Day. Uh, I watched that this past weekend, and uh, I had low expectations on it because it just didn't do that well at the box office. And Tom Cruise is kind of the end thing to do to bash Tom Cruise these days. Mm. And uh, I watched it, and it's it's a good movie. It's mm. not a great movie. So it's a fun movie. I mean, it's it's action and it's got some wit to it, and you know, a Cameron Diaz has got a little more meat in her bones, which is you know when she's she's better when she's got <laughs> she had gotten you know amazing. See, see the mask for reference. See the mask. Let's get what we're talking about. Yeah, when she was actually pretty. Well, yeah. yeah. I mean, she had actually had a sandwich or two. Yeah. But the mask, and then she stopped eating altogether right. for about 10, 15 years. Yeah. And now I think she finally ate. You know. She finally went down to and you know had a sandwich. Yeah, she moved up from one meal a day to two, and I think she went from. We're 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 appreciative. I think she went from one lifesavers a day to a full meal. I think is what happened. <laughs> so yeah. yeah, it went to the right spots, and she's back. <laughs> God bless her. And no, that was a good. I had low expectations. A lot of people probably out there were like, "Eh, Tom Cruise." No, Night and Day is a good movie. You know, it is. It's a good movie. Not great, but good. Okay. Sorry, I'm, I was I was just trying to imagine. Uh, you got me excited. Now I want to go home and uh, yeah. watch that. You have to grab that. Go by the red box on the way home. Yeah. Grab, grab night and day. Um, my movie rental suggestion this week is uh, since True Grit, the the this uh, Coen Brothers movie <clears throat> is about to come out. Westerns uh, have certainly not gotten made as much as they used to. Mm -hmm. um, in that spirit of that, go check out a, a, a film called Seraphim Falls. came out in 2006. <coughs> but is, Harris, is that the Aaron Harris one? No. Uh, oh. <coughs> I think me. of Appaloosa, I think is what I'm thinking of. Yeah. Okay. Uh, this stars uh, Pierce Brosnan mm -hmm. and Liam Neeson. Uh, okay. it is, it's a solid um, western. It, it's, it's almost a, a psychological thriller in a way. Mm -hmm. Because you have uh, Liam Neeson's character has been on revenge mm -hmm. for uh, what Brosnan's character did during the war, and mm -hmm. he he bears this grudge bitterly. Mm -hmm. And uh, and as Brosnan's trying to get on with his life after the Civil War, Liam Neeson continues to just keep hounding him and hunting him down. Yeah. And it ends up being you know uh, a gripping drama. So check it out. Right. And uh, one thing I would like to say too, you know, Pierce Brosnan doesn't get enough credit for being such a great physical actor, and he yeah. is. And this is a here's a performance uh, that is case in point. So well, the check beauty it out. of Pierce Brosnan is is unlike a lot of your British actors. No offense, Brits, but he sheds the. That, that stuffiness, the stuffiness, and the unwillingness to get your hands dirty, very well. And he get, he'll get he can get down and dirty in a movie, you know. And uh, and, mm -hmm. and, I, and there was even a movie he did some. I think it was called the the Tailor of Panama. He yes. was like a dirty, perverted, <laughs> nasty guy. <laughs> and you know what I'm talking about? You saw that one with Jamie Lee Curtis and uh, Another Jeffrey one Rush. And uh, he was he was like very perverted and nasty. <laughs> Very un Brit like, you know? And uh, Pierce Brosnan is an underrated actor. I know he's made a ton of money and James yeah. Bond and all that stuff, so it's hard to say underrated, but he is. He really is an he, underrated actor. He is actor. underrated, yeah, yeah, he is. Uh, well, yeah, I remember a movie he did. Uh, it was his. It was this kind of a reimagining of Robinson Crusoe. Yeah. While the film is not necessarily particularly good, yeah. you should see it for his performance mm -hmm. because he. It, it just. Uh, I mean, they're showing the conditions with him having to be on the island alone, and, and he's at one point sick, and he's having to battle through it. All these things, you really feel that this guy, oh gosh, this guy really is, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you feel what he's feeling physically. Yeah. You know, if he's cold, you really feel he's cold. Yeah. Uh, if he's sick, you feel he, as sick as he does. And, yeah. and that's that kind of physicality that very few actors uh, have. If it's not cats, it's dogs. I swear, the Red Sea dog is uh, keeps barking at people here. 
Anyway, all right, quote of the week. Quote of the week. Last week's, I'm ready to kick your ass out of the world, war hero. And hopefully everyone knew that that is from Escape from New York. That's one of my favorite quotes Lee Van ever. Cleef. Lee Van Cleef. I salute you, sir. <laughs> I love that quote. And that's one of my favorites. Um, this week's quote, um, and everyone, I, I believe the holiday season and the gift of giving. So here is yet again another easy one. All right, here we go. When... And when everyone's super, no one will be. And when, when everyone is super, no one will be. Oh, okay. I didn't know that one. One more time. And when everyone's super, no one will be. That's an easy one. Okay. So if you want to answer, go to Facebook, go to the Incredible Hoax page, right on our wall, or email us at hoax at redseatelevision.com. That's hoax. At redseatelevision.com. And with it, and with it, and with it. See, segways, we suck at segways. And with that, I bid you adieu. So long, everybody. If you watch this, you might catch the.